Okay, guys. Now, I wasn't actually going to film this video because uh, it's unlike most of my videos, this isn't fully thought out. This is uh, just something I'm just going to build on the fly. And I don't normally do videos that way. I usually pre-plan them. But I thought maybe I'd show you this, you know, last minute change. I decided to video it, show you maybe the organic process that goes into some of these projects when you're kind of making it up as you go along. So anyway, for quite a while now, I've been planning on making one of those uh, portable bandsaw table setups. Uh, you can buy them. I know that and a lot of people DIY them, which I'm going to do here as well. Um, and about a year ago, I bought this Bauer here. Uh, I think I paid about 130 bucks. I, I can't quite remember. If I find out what it is, uh, I'll put it on the screen for you. Uh, variable bands, uh, variable speed deep cut bandsaw kit, model 1678E B. Uh, standard size blade, 0 to 420 feet per minute. Uh, I bought this thing exclusively for this purpose, and I've been dragging my feet making this project, uh, but I think it's time to do it. So, anyway, now, Unlike a lot of the other videos you may have already seen, and I've watched quite a few of them, okay, and got some good ideas, but I've decided to do things a little bit differently here. I am not going to attempt to keep this as a uh, portable bandsaw and as the table bandsaw. What I'm going to do is make it permanently into the table, you know, mount, you know, vertical mounted bandsaw. And, uh, there's a couple reasons for that. One, I don't want to screw around with having to uh, take this out of the table and no matter how easy it is and use it. I don't often use a porta band. I have another saw for most of that kind of cutting. Um, so like that's why I said this is bought exclusively for this purpose because I do not have a vertical metal bandsaw in this shop. It's been on the wish list, but you know, they're expensive, even used. Uh, just got back uh, a couple days ago. I went for a little trip with my son to a used machinery dealer big warehouse and I was uh, thinking I'd strike gold and find a used portable or a used metal bandsaw and uh, no luck. They uh, sell as soon as, as fast as he gets them in. So this is what I got to resort to. So anyway, here's my thoughts, okay? And now first, please, you know, before you comment, I'm fully aware that I'm going to void the warranty on this and it's going to be permanent and I'm willing to accept those risks. Uh, you do what you choose. So the first step is, uh, let me just take this blade off of here. And then I'm going to take off this handle here and we will do a little exploratory surgery. Okay, so right now I can see there's like one, two, three, four, five, six Phillips head screws and then these four uh, Allen screws. So let me take these out and we'll see what we have to deal with then. Okay, pretty much as I suspected, okay. So we got, here's our speed control. And that's just, looks like it's just slotted in there. Okay. You may notice I'm not taking much care here and worrying about how many this is going to reassemble because none of this handle will be, be reused here. Okay, so we have a strain relief here. And here are the three wires, two wires actually, and a ground wire going to the motor. This is as simple as I hoped it would be. Oh, I see down here we have a couple more screws right here. We take this strain relief off. That's a stubborn one. Be right back. Okay, so I'm going to cut these wires here because whatever I do with this, I'm going to be mounting this switch. I probably won't even be reusing this switch. This is simply an on-off switch. 
<clears throat> the speed control is, from, is using this wheel. So uh, I can replace this switch with any switch of my choosing other than this one. Uh, it all looks like simple wiring and right here I have, like I said, two red wires. Two red wires going to the motor. Um, it's going to be an AC motor, but I'm going to mark them nonetheless, just so I put them back at the same spot. And I will be splicing them and lengthening them later. So I'll just tag this one white and this one white. Green ground is obvious. So this one is obviously by default there. Okay. Now I can set all this aside. And when it comes time to do the electronics part, I will be pulling this the rest of the way out of there and figuring out a way to mount this speed switch in uh, this as well. So let's get this out of the way. All right, give me a sec. So here's what we have. Yeah. So my concerns are being able to rigidly mount this. And I already see right now, this is the best scenario I could hope for because I have these, these two screws going into this die casting right here. Um, they look like they're, everything looks like it's square. Let's pretend this is mounted. It looks like it's vertical. The band, the bandsaw blade would be vertical. And uh, handle's kind of in the way there, but it's looking to me like these things are parallel to each other. So like I said, that's about the best I could hope for. So what I'm gonna do is fabricate, and we'll, we'll get into this detail later here, after I make a couple sketches, but we're going to fabricate a steel base that will either be mounted or bolted, bolted or clamped to whatever work surface I want. And off of that will come a vertical tab to pick up these two screw holes. And then further in back will be another vertical tab coming up off of that base. And I will utilize all four of these screws here as well. And uh, if it's not too thick, I should just be able to reuse these factory screws, which are metric. They look like maybe M6s. And uh, we'll have to incorporate a cover plate to uh, cover these wires here as well. And, you know, make that safe. And these will be, these will be uh, solder spliced and, uh, you know, use some heat shrink tubing on them to make them electrically safe. Shouldn't be a problem. So I think if, uh, yeah, I fabricate this mount here on a base, I will have this rigidly secured, you know, because when you're using the bandsaw, <clears throat> you know, you're going to be pushing material into that blade. And, you know, when you're pushing into that blade, if this isn't mounted rigidly, I mean, it's going to deflect, or if you don't have it clamped or bolted on, the whole thing could slide. Uh, I don't need that. You know, I want this thing to be pretty solid. Um, as far as the table here, I've actually went ahead and I've removed this you know, this foot plate here, I guess you want to call it. But uh, I will be making, of course, a big table base. And I'm still up in the air. We'll, we'll figure this out as we go along, whether I'm going to reuse those two screws or whether I'm just going to somehow support this table right off the same base that supports this and this. Um, and seeing how rigid this is, this is, this is right into the main casting here. This is gonna be very, very strong. Uh, those two, two will be uh, locked together. And I think that, you know, my table base will be very rigid. Um, and I am going to make my table with a slot in the back. I mean, I don't want the slot coming out the front like some people do so that you can change the blade without having to remove the table. I've already faced the fact that I don't want that slot in the front I'm going to make the slot in the back, which means my table is going to have to slide on and off to change the blade, but I'm going to figure out some kind of uh, quick attach so it's not, not, not a pain in the ass to change the blade. You know, so what you'll undo that, slide the table off, change the blade, slide it back on, and it should work real good. Uh, okay, guys, so I got a little ahead of myself, and I went ahead and I didn't film this part, but I built a wooden prototype. Um, 
I took my dimensions uh, off the Porta band and I went ahead and made a couple sketches and I fabricated, a, uh, I'm gonna call it a crude prototype, but it's actually a lot better than I thought out of plywood. I'll show you that in a second here, but I wanted to show you, here's the, here's the Porta band again with the handle and all that removed. I uh, had to lengthen these two wires going to the motor uh, and replace the ground wire since it's just screwed on. Uh, we'll get more into this later. Um, well, let me show you how I got my design dimensions first. Um, in order to, to, to figure out how to mount this to whatever I was going to mount it to, <clears throat> I basically took a few simple measurements. And again, the engineers here at this uh, Bauer made this as simple as it could possibly get. So upon looking at this, these mounting surfaces are parallel to each other and also parallel to the blade. And that couldn't have made my job easier here. So I took a framing square and I'm setting this 10 inch mark on the center of this lowest hole on the mounting pad back here, there's four screws. And you can see that uh, everything is nice and parallel. And then to double check that, I took a square here off of this mark and I can verify that that is, was, was indeed parallel. So the reason I set 10 inches off the bottom hole was because that gave me a little clearance here between this is going to be the top of my, my base and I have clearance here. So I thought that was a good round number. And then I went ahead and I took another roll and off of this same top of the base reference line while holding the 10 inch, I measured to these two mining holes right here. You can see, and this one was inch and three out, eighths up and this was one inch center to center. And these holes were inch and a half center to center, inch and a half center to center. I think they were actually 38 millimeters, but that's a close enough conversion. So anyway, that's enough of how I got the basic dimensions. Uh, what I did then was I fabricated some plywood pieces, uh, the two tabs that would support this off the base. There were two separate ones. And I cut this one to width in length and put the whole pattern in it based off my measurements. And I made a second one for right here. And you'll see that in just a second. And I wasn't concerned with this center to center spacing because my method of assembly is going to be to screw this one on here, screw this one on here, set it on the base, align it where I wanted it, mark those, and then attach them to the base. So let's, let me show you that right now. Okay, so this here is the base. And everything here is made from three quarter inch plywood. And uh, it's just basically scraps I had laying around, but if I had to do this over, I think I would probably uh, pull the trigger and make this all out of Baltic birch. But uh, being a prototype, I didn't want to waste that. It's expensive material. So here you can see this was the back mounting uh, for the back where the motor goes. It's just, it's like three quarter by four, if I recall. Three quarter by four. And again, these holes were 10 inches and then inch and a half. So that was 11 and a half, an inch and a half center to center this way. These holes were a through hole for an M6 bolt. And this here is a three quarter inch hole for the wiring to pass through. Now you may notice that I also, due to the length of this, I glued a piece of three quarter inch on both sides as a stiffener. Um, here's the smaller tab that mounts to the bottom of the motor. I just arbitrarily picked the size of material, three inch by three inch, it worked. And again, I laid the hole patterns out here, inch and three eighths up, and then another one inch center to center. And those were right in line. So what I did was I bolted these two to the porta band, set the whole thing on the base, and at that time this base was slightly oversized. Um, I kind of squared it up where I thought it should be, giving myself enough room for the whole base, marked around that, uh, took it back off, you know, drilled these holes, and screwed, uh, screwed and glued those pieces on. So that was, a, that was from mounting the porta band to the base. And, it, and it's actually, it's, it's very rigid. I was re really happy with that. Um, now let's move on to some of the other details, how I uh, determined all this here. Um, this is the table, you see? And I did something a little unique, maybe more different than other people would do. I made my table so that it pulls away from, instead of slotting in, I made it so that it pivots down out of the way so you can change the blade. Um, I kind of like that. I never seen that before. I just kind of, I slept on this overnight and that, that was what I come up with. 
Uh, you can see here, these are the pivot holes for quarter inch bolts. And I cut these, you know, these are three quarter inch plywood, two inches by, well, whatever the hell they are. This might be six and that's four something. Um, you might notice there's a slight little relief cut there. That's just because that was really close to the blade, made it easier for changing the blade. So uh, let me mount the porta band in here and I'll show you how I uh, determined the table size. I did have to replace the factory bolts. These are again M6 bolts and they're about an inch and an eighth long. I cut them from some oversized bolts I had here in the shop. Whoops. Uh, at any rate, since I was going with three quarter inch plywood, the factory bolts were too short. So anyway, you'd have to replace these bolts. Okay, so now you can see, let's adjust the camera. Now you can see the porter band is mounted and it's pretty darn rigid, as rigid as it needs to be. Okay, so again, we got these M6 bolts here, these M6 bolts here. You'll see in a second, there's gonna be a junction box right here. Um, so anyway, let's move on to the table. Um, the table, once I had this, these, the, the porter band and the two plates pieces screwed down to the base, then I kind of measured over from a square reference line where the blade was. And I wanted to make my table at least 10 by 10. Um, given a piece of material I had laying around, I made it like 10 and 3 eighths by 12 and a quarter. And I think that was pretty good. So this piece, this base here actually measures 10 and a quarter this way, and about 13 and a quarter there, right? So I located the blade, and I determined where uh, my table needed to be centered, you know, centered on the blade. Um, so I cut that piece, and I wanted to inset these two side members, which I did then, by kind of assembling the table and these all at the same time. And I had the blade out at the time, and then, I screwed these down, drilled the holes through here so that everything lined up real good, and I had my, my top. Now at that time, this, this slot was not in there, okay? You may see that, so. So then I, I put my bolts on. Okay, I'm going to take the blade out just to show you. There you go. Show you how it was kind of working. So I had fit the table, all these three pieces here, all at the same time. Screwed it down. And now I had a, a functional table. Let me put these bolts on here in the pivot. Okay. And I just have some nylock nuts there on the end of these quarter inch bolts. And I'm not over tightening, I'm just getting them just snug enough so that everything is touching and can still pivot, pivot freely. Okay, so you can see uh, how the table works. Now, as far as how I got the slot in the table, that was actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be. I simply mounted the blade back in there. Let me see, kind of might be tough to show you this with the, with the table in the way, but I have enough room in here to put the blade down in there and mount it. These Harbor Freight models here, these Bowers, they're not the easiest to put the blade on, but uh, I had, a, I had a Milwaukee, a, or rather a place I worked had a Milwaukee and a Porta band, and uh, 
they were much easier to change the blade. So anyway, once the blade was installed, and I, I, I ran it for a second to, uh, to get it to uh, center itself up, then I turned it on and I just basically pushed this in and cut it. And that was it. Okay? So that's the base. Now, you may be wondering, how am I holding this down rigid? I'm going to show you that right now. So here, I was almost overthinking this, but last minute I just used some hardware that I had, an eye bolt, and I put a T-nut in there, and you may see the T-nut right in the top of the table. I just located them where they would clear everything, cut them to the correct length, and I'm using a turnbuckle here to actually clamp this down. And then this one mounts in from the bottom, right here. Okay, let me get that nice and lined up with the other one. Okay, so you can see there's a two eye bolts and then this you know, hardware store turnbuckle, I believe the threads on this are 5 16 and you can just put the turnbuckle in and then tighten it up. So it's a pretty quick change on the blade. You know, you just loosen the turnbuckle, unhook it, and then the table pivots forward so that you can, there. And then that is nice, nice and rigidly clamped on. You notice that this is nice and tight here. And my table is parallel to the base, okay? So we are, we are squared up. All right, what do you think? Um, I've been really, really happy with it so far. Um, sorry. Once I uh, got the wood done, I cut a piece of aluminum, the same profile as the table, and screwed it on in all four corners. And then again, I tipped this forward, mounted the aluminum, sorry, and then tipped it back, and then I cut this matching slot in the aluminum. So it's already pre-mounted here, and I have Four little flathead wood screws. There. Okay, now I chose to use aluminum uh, because I had a piece roughly the, the correct size. It's uh, 1 8 inch thick aluminum and four countersunk so that the screws are recessed. Um, I, can all, I can tell you right now already that I'm, I'm considering replacing this aluminum with a piece of 1 8 inch steel because having used it a few times, and I, I, I kind of had a suspicion this was gonna happen, the material can, you know, the, the steel, or most often what you're cutting is gonna be harder than the aluminum if you're cutting steel. <laughs> and it's going to scratch the aluminum surface, but more importantly than that, it's just going to kind of drag on it, and it's going to kind of give you this resistance that uh, I'm not happy with, which if this was a steel table, that, that really wouldn't happen. Okay, so everything here, the essential structure is complete now, and now we just have to wire it in, and let me show you what I decided to do there. Might have to reposition the camera. Okay, so... You can see the wires there. Now, you probably recall me talking about reusing the factory speed control wheel. And here was the factory switch that I knew I wouldn't be using. Um, it is just a simple on off switch. There's no circuitry in this. So this is the brains of the operation as far as controlling the speed. And I did an ampere test. I, I tested the amps when I was under load. And I was drawing, even though mo the motor is supposed to be 10 amps, okay, it, it was only drawing, un under no load that is, not cutting anything, about 4.8 amps. Um, so that's not a lot of current. So I decided to scrap this. And mainly the reason I decided to do that was I'd remembered that I had this here router speed control. It was in my drawer with uh, all my router bits and it, it ended up not working for my router because I didn't know it at the time I bought this, but it doesn't work with a soft start router. 
which most modern routers have, <laughs> at least mine. So it didn't work for that. So I just got stuck in the drawer. And this might've been about five years ago. So anyway, I decided that, hey, you know, I'll just bypass the speed control for the factory and replace it with this one. And here's the brand here. It's, it's actually made in Taiwan. It's actually, there is no brand, but it's Ride LPA, but it's, you know, made in Taiwan, 20 amps. So I got a switch here to put it on full speed. The middle position is off. And when you click it to that side, then you have the variable speed. So I thought I'd give that a go. So let me show you how I'm mounting this on here. So I bent this aluminum bar to actually mount it. You'll see in a sec. <laughs> okay, so now perhaps you can see that's mounted in the back, kind of out of the way. And yet it's still being me, I'm right-handed. It's real easy to get to the get to the controls. All right, so this is actually, this plugs into the wall. This will be the supplied power. I'm just routing that over there. That'll be cable tied. And now it's time to do the junction box. And that's equally as simple. Um, I picked up a plastic, uh, conduit, it's plastic conduit type junction box from Lowe's. Um, I had this cable strain relief fitting this is the actual factory cord from the porta band, uh, which I cut short, stripped the insulation back, exposed the wires, popped that into a plug there because unfortunately you can't buy these boxes without holes in them. So I needed to get an oversized one. I can put a plug in there and put that strain relief in there. So there, here's, this is the power that is going to be feeding the porta band. And this will in turn plug into the speed control and the speed control will be plugged into the wire. So pretty much now I just, you notice I cut out the back of the back of the junction box to clear all this. So now it's pretty much to mount this, make the connections, put the cover on, and we should be in business. So let me do that. Okay, connections are made. Now, basically, here's the wire going from the junction box at the porta band up here. Plugs right here into the bottom of the speed control. Okay. Couple of cable ties, neaten it up. There we go. Porta band. What do you think, guys? What do you think? I mean, I think it's a gem. I think it's really good. Look at this. I can clamp this down wherever I need it, workbench, uh, wherever. If I need to permanently mount it, I can just run some screws down there. I got my power switch right here. Good to go. All right, let me just uh, let me just cut a piece here for you. Tell you what, let's move it over to where it's going to go for now, and then we will try it out. All right, the light was really terrible over there on the workbench, so I'm just going to demonstrate it for you right here. You move that cushion, plug it in, and. I'm going to clamp it down. 
to the table. There we go. How's that? All right. That's full speed. Rather odd. Here's the variable speed. Starts around there, it's very low. There they go. All right, this is a piece of quarter inch steel flat bar. I'm so happy with that. I am so happy with that. Everything except my aluminum table. Like I said, we may rectify that here in the future. You see those cuts were real time. It's, uh, it's doing really good. It's got enough balls. Really happy with this build. So uh, now my intentions on this were to actually fabricate all this out of steel. And hence that's the reason why I went and made a wood prototype so that I could iron all the kinks out and not bore you to death showing you all that step of the process and then be able to show you the, you know, the final fit up and, and, and build out of metal. However, I'm so happy with the way this turned out in wood that I may leave well enough alone and just keep this one. Please let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see me build this out of metal. If I get enough interest in that, maybe I will fabricate and, and show you that process uh, out of steel, fabricating it out of steel. Um, please uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, like, the, like this video if it helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more cool projects. Do a lot of CNC work. Got a laser engraver a little bit ago. Been using that too. Got more videos of that to come. And uh, always more fabrication and other DIY projects. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.